and welcome to Face It, presented by Fayette County Public Schools in the 16th District PTA. We are all facing challenging times right now, but we believe that it's better that we face it together. This show was created for a shared space and time, as well as allowing a virtual interaction to discuss relevant topics that are happening right now in real time and topics that are at the forefront of our minds. This is the time the whole village, that's the family, businesses, organizations, and community to support each other. Face it is a platform for real talk, real relationships, real ways for us to express what we feel, focus our energy on positive ways and solutions. This is something that's good. So enjoy, sit back. This is one of the feel good moments. We're gonna have some nice conversations between uh, our guests today. Absolutely. I'm Melody Westerfield, the FACE, the Family and Community Engagement Liaison at William Wells Brown Elementary School. And my name is Christina Dare. I work in the Office of Equity, School Support, Community Engagement. My area of focus is educating boys of color. And our topic for today is facing our family wellness. We have a few guests with us today provide expert advice. Sharika Smith, you can introduce yourself real quick. Hello, everyone. Thank you all so much for having me. Um, I am Sharika Smith. I work for Fayette County Public Schools um, in the Department of Student Support, and I help coordinate mental health services for the district. And another you. expert. Thank you. Uh, another expert is Michelle Bowling. Can you introduce yourself? Hello. Thank you for having me today. Um, my name is Michelle Bowling. I'm the Director of Business Development here at the Ridge Behavioral Health in Lexington. Good to meet you, Michelle. And we also have FCPS parent with us, Alicia Wilson. Please introduce yourself. Good afternoon. Uh, my name again is Alicia Wilson. I am the parent of two children currently in Fayette County Public Schools, um, a rising 10th grader and a rising 5th grader, soon adding a kindergartner into the lot. Well, <laughs> okay, awesome. Alicia, you, you have a house full over there, don't you? <laughs> Absolutely. Good, good. So without further ado, let's get started, you all. This first question is for Alicia. Okay. With everything that's going on and stress at an all-time high right now, the real question is, when this pandemic first started, what did you think and how was you feeling as a parent? At uh, first, I uh, really wasn't super concerned. I think I kind of went into it. As long as my mom's okay, mm -hmm. we can handle everything else. And then reality hit. I started working from home, two kids coming home, a third one not in school, a husband at home. Mm -hmm. And we're all trying to get through and say, all right, within these four walls, how are we going to do it? Teacher, employee, and parent. It was a lot. I bet. Um, I bet. A whole lot. <laughs> the reality was is that um, you have to do your best. Absolutely. Um, you have kids that are removing themselves away from their friends, away from their norms, um, sports, their ac extracurricular activities. And you're trying to find a way to say, hey, it's going to be OK. We're going to make it. We're going to get through this. We're going to get through it together. In the mm -hmm. words of uh, the governor Absolutely. Um, and having that reality. And once you hit the kind of bumps in the road and kind of get to a smooth surface you remember we are going to get through it and it's going to be okay that's good that's good that's real good you said a very important word you said together i like to always speak as in everybody's a piece of the puzzle okay. and here we have a puzzle going on right here we have different minds and different aspects of what we're going to talk about today um so as part of Village, Michelle, I'd like to ask you a question from your expertise. Um, how, do, how do the high levels of stress affect us both mentally and physically? What, what are we feeling right now? How is it affecting us? Because this is a stressful time. Yes, it is a very stressful time, and um, we know that, that high levels of stress affect us in, in many different ways. Um, it, looks, um, it looks different from person to person. Um, you know, physically, stress can cause us to gain weight. It can cause us to lose weight. 
Um, it can cause us to be tired and fatigued. Um, it can also cause insomnia, even though we're super tired, you know, so stressed out that we're fatigued. Um, we can we can lose sleep. We can stay up, you know, all night, not tossing and turning, that type of thing. Um, it can um, it can cause headaches. It can cause um, you know diarrhea. Think you know just digestive um, you know system problems. Um, and, and that's you know that's just um, just a, you know small number of, of physical um, physical things that we can um, you know we can feel. Um, but mentally, we can become. Um, you know, depressed, we can become sad, anxious, um, we can be very irritable um, and not really know how to, to regulate those emotions because it's come on so quickly. Um, so, you know, I think that just, you know, during this time, not only are um, our adults feeling this, but children, adolescents um, are feeling it as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It seems like one extreme to another, it seems like. Yeah. Well, I mean, it seems like this has now forced us into a new norm. So, Sharika, my question is to you, how do we prioritize our mental health in spite of this unpredictable and uncontrollable situation that we're in right now? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think our mental health definitely needs to be on the, the front um, of our minds. You know, a lot of us are, are so worried about getting schoolwork done. A lot of us are so worried about still working. Um, but a lot of those things can't truly happen until we take care of ourselves, right? Um, so I think one of the main things that's going to help us is creating a routine, create a structure. So if you're at home by yourself, um, like I am, I, I still have to get up at a certain point. I still have to do this, you know, by a certain time. I can't be around all day, even though I would love to. Um, but that's going to maybe, you know, cause more stress because we're just in this time that we don't really know how to, to deal with. Um, or if you're at home and you have children, make sure your children are on a routine. Make sure your children are on a schedule. Um, and it, that may look differently from your neighbor's schedule. You know, if you're working, mm -hmm. you're also trying to be your child's teacher, um, your schedule may look a lot different than someone else's. So get everything that you need to get done, but make sure that you're on a schedule um, just so it kind of normalizes um, your, new, your new lifestyle, right? Also, listen to your body. If your body is telling you to take a break, to rest, um, then do that. Um, because a lot of times, just like Michelle said earlier, this unknown can really, really cause some stress. So if your body's kind of feeling um, differently, listen to your body and, and take care of it. Um, that comes with getting a lot of sleep. Get, or not, I'm sorry, not, not a lot of sleep, but ample sleep. Get enough sleep so um, you don't fall into that pattern of, of staying up all night and, and, like Michelle said, kind of insomnia, like, like stress can do. Um, and then exercise. It's important to um, get exercise, and it doesn't mean you have to run three miles a day, but go out and enjoy the sun. Um, enjoy what we can, um, what's still available to us during this pandemic. Um, if you can find ways to support the community uh, without, you know, going out and, and exposing yourself to the to uh, um, the coronavirus, I think that's a great idea to kind of give back. You know, when we talk about mental health, if you are volunteering, sometimes that is huge for mental health. So just find ways to help the community, but still stay, stay safe. Um, and then finally, seeking mental health treatment if, if it's necessary. Um, you know, a lot of times people shy away from mental health treatment because of the stigma and um, and what society says about it. But now, especially, uh, mental health services are still available. Um, and if you feel like you are becoming overwhelmed or your kids are becoming overwhelmed um, and that's what the next step needs to be, then definitely take that next step. Well, to build off of that, Alicia, I got a question for you. Uh, she mentioned a couple, you know, the new norm and what you can do as a family. So as a parent, what have you done to lower stress at your home and create a safe and secure environment for your family? And can you also discuss having some type of routine or have you started a new normal, a new routine for your family? And share, share your thoughts on that. Absolutely. Um, our, our new norm is not um, in the confines of a box, obviously. Um, what you would typically consider a normal day, getting up, going to school, after, after school activities, it's out the window for us. Um, our new norm is um, surviving. <laughs> our new norm is surviving, doing the best that we can. Um, understanding that 
Um, sometimes they're going to get a, a late start on what you want them to do school-wise and that it's okay. Um, giving yourself a little bit of grace as a family um, mm -hmm. because you've got everything that you're used to doing out in the world now brought into the four walls of your house. Um, we try our best to stick to a, a bedtime routine, um, but if we don't, at the end of the day, it's not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna, it's not a disaster zone. <laughs> right. um, as long as we can get everything that we need done in that day done, we've won. Okay. We've won the battle for the day. Um, as far as some things that we've thrown in to kind of keep our, our family happy and healthy, um, we started a family workout routine. Um, I get off of work at a certain time. When I get off at that point, it's, hey, stop what you're doing. No matter where you're at, if you're in the middle of a game, get off the game. If you're in the middle of your lesson, put your books down. We've got 15, 20 minutes to get in a healthy routine to keep us physically fit, to kind of let that um, stress go, kind of compete against each other and get that energy out. Um, mm -hmm. It's important for us. We, we're going on family walks. Yeah. I couldn't tell you the last time that the five of us before this went out on a walk and just uh -huh. walked a mile or two. It, it, was, nice. it was something in, involved. You had an athletic a, a activity to go to before. You had somewhere to be. Those confines are now gone. Um, so now we have been able to kind of pull it at some factors that um, are not our norm, but now are our new norm, if that makes sense. <laughs> Those are two great ideas. I hope some parents hear that, you know, family workout, drop what you're doing. Uh, we used to call it drop and read. Now you're dropping exercise and yeah. it's a simple family walk. Those are some great ideas. I'm sure you That's guys get a lot of conversation in with those walks too, so. Right. Yeah, um, conversation's been really big for us. Um, we had a 15-year-old that out of nowhere one night came down and just melted, melted in tears because his norm is his um, social activity, mm -hmm. his going to school, getting that interaction, and it's not there. Mm -hmm. So you also have to, I feel, um, encourage your kids to reach out to their friends. Um, if you can get them on a Zoom, great. If not... Encourage them to send that text. Say, hey, when's the last time you talked to so-and-so? They doing okay? If not, check on them more. Right. Do that extra bit. <clears throat> so it sounds like that, um, you know, some of that physical walking and those conversations during those walks are, you know, some of the positives that, you know, has come from being on quarantine. Um, is there any other positive you would, you know, kind of go out and say that, you know, you and your family can take out of, you know, like I said, being on quarantine during this time? You have a few more um, suggestions or things that your family has gone through that positively impacted you during this time? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> we've stopped eating out as much. Um, <laughs> we have now... Uh, become a family that is making breakfast, lunch, and dinner at home together. Um, everybody kind of gets their chance to put an input in of what they're wanting tonight. Of course, yesterday was Taco Tuesday. <laughs> um, so, you know, just to get that activity in, um, you hit a couple of factors when you're cooking at home because then you get to add some school stuff in. How many pints go into a quart? Um, what does the cup look like? Uh, so what's big, what's small, um, to even helping the, the preschooler, um, trying to get things in. The other thing we went to is family game night. We don't do it every week. We don't do it every night, but if somebody wants to play a game, we have board games, we have puzzles. Let's go ahead and, and put that in. You can fulfill that wish if you're home when you're not as home as much, it's kind of hard to to fulfill that desire that a kid might have. But now, what's your excuse? Right, absolutely. Absolutely. That's good. Yeah, you, you're hitting it right there. <laughs> you're hitting it. <laughs> well, to keep building off this advice, you know, solutions, uh, Ms. Smith, I have a question for you mm -hmm. and your expertise. Uh, what advice do you have to lower stress for our families? And can you do specific techniques such as breathing or exercise Oh, and also, how do we connect people with mental health services in the community? 
Absolutely. Uh, that's a good question, Christian. Um, I think most importantly, I want to stress that check your school's website, your, your student's school website. Um, all of our social workers, our counselors, our district mental health specialists, our FRISCs, a lot of them have put great information on their school website. Some of them have created their own websites um, and in, including um, different mindfulness activities that you all can do at home, different breathing techniques, um, just different fun engagement activities for your family. Alicia has some great ideas um, uh, that you all can do with your family, but there's, there's even more on the website. So please, please, please go to your school's website, reach out to the student support team, um, if, if you need any assistance as far as food or, or um, you know, utilities right now, don't let those things be um, add stress to what's already going on, right? Um, but also, I would say schedule calls with the family. Just like Alicia said, mm -hmm. earlier, check on your people. You know, there's some people who mm -hmm. are struggling. Um, if you're struggling, sometimes you just need to hear another voice, right? Um, so FaceTime someone, get on a Google chat, and really kind of interact with them in a different way than you normally would, but so you still kind of get that communication. Um, and then just staying connected. All those resources for uh, the Ridge, the phone number for the Ridge is on those websites, as well as um, different mental health resources and agencies in the community. You can find those um, easily on the school's website. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm on the student support team at my school. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and we're constantly doing all that. Christian, I know you're constantly checking in with your your um, boys. So um, that's super important. Um, we also want Alicia, uh, Alicia to answer that question. Um, for us, um, it, it, I mean, our life right now is, uh, it's very different. Um, I think the biggest thing for us has been interaction. As humans, we're social people. Mm -hmm. um, we have to find our route. We have to find our way to engage. Um, even if it's sitting out, we, we painted our door. We did a, a stained glass window on our door. Um, sit, it's something as simple as sitting out on our porch, watching people walk past in our neighborhood and them saying, hey, we like your door, or us saying hi, or walking past and saying hi, is fulfilling our social obligation of our social distancing, but also fulfilling our internal need for that human interaction. Right. That was good. Yesterday I was chased by a dog and the neighbor had to, <laughs> the neighbor had to, you know, help me find my way home. I'm not a dog person, but I was chased by a dog. But even that, even that situation was a blessing because, you know, I got to interact with my neighbor who I never get a chance to kind of <laughs> interact with. So you're right about that. I appreciate it. This is all good advice, mm -hmm. all good information to know. And I thank you all for joining us this week on this week's Face It Chat. We will, we would like to stay um, connected connected with you and continue to build a strong commu community and to support our, all of our families. And Christian is going to tell us how we can do that. Okay. First, if you want your exercise, don't use getting chased by a dog <laughs> uh, to get your exercise. But um, what we want to do, because we're engaging the community and we're trying to bring people together on these topics that we're going to have, exciting topics, we want you to send us pictures videos or words of encouragement that you can share with each other about how you're facing it at home. We want people brought together and just to give us some ideas. We have so much creativity and innovation out here. We have no idea what's going on in these homes, but based on TikTok and Instagram and all that, we have some creative things going on, but share it with our community. Uh, and how you can do that, you can email it to us at fcps face it, that's at gmail.com. F C P S F A C E I T at gmail.com. On Friday, we will highlight some of the messages received to serve the encouragement to our community and our family. So when you send them to us, we're going to broadcast them again so we can get people to come and see and share those uh, with the community. Uh, we also know, um, we also want to know what questions and suggestions you have about today's topic. Your email, you can also email the questions at the same email at fcpsfaceit at gmail, or you can send a text. You know, we like to text. The phone number is 859-903-5531. Uh, and join us next Wednesday, May 13th at 630, as we go live to answer your questions. So you send us the questions, 
We're going to get the experts and some other parents to answer them. We want to hear your solutions because it's all solution driven. Uh, and Melody, final yes, word. Yes, absolutely. So um, we will feature a, a new, uh, we will have a, a new Face It feature um, topic on Wednesday, May 20th. That will be at 6.30. Um, and during our next chat, we will talk about how to support our children, like Michelle said, um, how to support our children through this pandemic. Um, um, we can't wait to continue to connect with you um, and continue to face it together. Bye, you all.